Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So if you have already seen, this is part two to my bookshelf tour series of episode three, which is my literary fiction section of my bookshelves. So if you don't know, I am doing a bookshelf tour series where episode one was an overall overview, episode two was my children's section, middle grade and young adult, and then episode three is my literary fiction section, which isn't really broken up into smaller sections like my classics collection is. So this video was very long when I originally filmed it, so I decided to break it up into two parts. Parts. If you haven't seen part one, I will link it somewhere in the description and in the video. And that was just the first part of my literary fiction section. This is part two. It was just really long, so I broke it up into two parts. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoy seeing the rest of my literary fiction collection. If you see any books on my shelves that you would love to hear more about or I haven't read that you would like to see what I think about them, if you'd like me to prioritize them, definitely let me know. Anyway, let's get on with part two of my literary fiction section. I'm going to start moving a little bit quicker through these because I do feel like we are going to be here forever. As you can tell, this has been in a very slight rainbow, which is how I've been organizing them, um, which I forgot to say up until this point. Anyway, the first book I have is The Martian by Andy Weir. This is my favorite science fiction novel, and it's one of the only science fiction novels I've ever read because I'm not huge into science fiction, but I love it. It is hilarious. Mark Watney is the main character, and he is basically stranded on Mars. The first part is hilarious how how it opens up, I'm not going to read it out loud because it has a lot of curses in it, but you just, you have to read it. Amazing. Amazing. I hope you read it. Even if you aren't into science fiction, it's a really great read, and it was also turned into a movie with Matt Damon as Mark Watney, which was also great. The next book I have is The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. I think that's how you say his last name. It's a lot about growth and learning about your own spirituality and humanity and it's a it's a beautiful quest and journey and finding the thing that you least expected to find when you're looking for something else. Then I have Circe by Madeline Miller and I adore this book. I got this special UK edition because I just needed it. I mean, how, how gorgeous is this book cover? And it gets even better. So we have a map on the inside, and then this is what it looks like under the dust jacket. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> How are books allowed to be this beautiful? I first read Song of Achilles, fell in love with it, and then I read Circe, and again fell in love with it. Madeline Miller's writing is incredible. I will literally read anything this woman writes. All of her books are hyped up for a reason, and Circe is about Circe in, in Greek mythology. This book is really slow paced and slow moving, but it matches really well with the fact that Circe barely ages herself. She is immortal and she is in exile, so it really feels like you are exiled with her. And it's such an immersive read, so enchanting, full of um, the feelings of Greek mythology, but also very approachable if you're not too familiar with Greek mythology. I think Madeline Miller with A Song of Achilles and Circe is a great place to start if you want to get more into Greek mythology or just mythology in general. So. One of my favorite books ever. Love it so much. Then I have Where the Crawdads Sing by Dahlia Owens. This is a beautiful book about a girl who, she's grown up in a marsh and she hasn't had much of an edu a formal education and she is really one with the marsh that she lives on. She is fascinated by the animals and the shells and the different species and the nature of this marsh and it's really become a part of her. It's also about her very conflicted family relationship. She hasn't really been taken care of. A lot of her family has left her and also living in a place where other people are really judging her a lot. And it also does have kind of a mystery 
court element to it, and this one is also hyped up for a reason. It's amazing. The next book I have is Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham from Gilmore Girls to Gilmore Girls and everything in between. So this is a nonfiction autobiography written by Lauren Graham who plays Lorelai in Gilmore Girls, and I got this book right when it came out before the Gilmore Girls revival. I loved this book. It's really just about Lauren Graham's whole career and experience becoming an actress and her experience working on Gilmore Girls and on the revival and I am one of the biggest fans of Gilmore Girls. It's such a huge part of, of my life and it really has shaped me into who I am today, as silly as that is. It really felt like I was sitting down and I was talking to her and just hearing about her experiences firsthand. Like it didn't feel like I was reading the, a book, it felt like I was just talking to her and it was wonderful. This next book is a book that my aunt actually lent to me and I haven't read it yet, but that is The Lost Summer of Louisa May Alcott. The next book I have is Lucia Lucia from Adriana Trigiani. I think my cousin gifted this to me because it ticked a lot of boxes. Um, set in New York City, Italian-American girl. Uh, I love the 50s. So, like I said, this is set in the 50s in New York City in Greenwich Village. And yes, it's a lot of things that, that pique my interest. Then we have The Five People You Meet in Heaven by Mitch Albom. This is one of my very favorite books. I don't want to say too much. Really heartfelt. Made me cry my eyes out when I read it. Mitch Albom is one of my favorite writers as well. And we also have After The Five People You Meet in Heaven. We have Tuesdays with Maury, which is a nonfiction book about Mitch Albom's experience with one of his old professors who has ALS and is ultimately slowly passing away. And so it says, an old man, a young man, and life's greatest lesson. And every Tuesday, Mitch Albom would visit his old professor, Maury. And it's all about them talking about life and love and it's just, it's so emotional and will make you cry. That's something about Mitch Albom's books. He just always makes me cry, um, which is why I love them so much. And this is an incredible one. So highly, highly recommend. Then I have the book that I'm currently listening to on audiobook. And if you guys watched my 2022 reading goals and TBR, I talk about this book in that video. And that is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This is a book about books. It's a book about a book graveyard, which is the setup of the story. There's this whole mystery surrounding Julian Carax, who is the author of the book that he finds in this book graveyard, the book is called The Shadow of the Wind by Julian Carax, and, and he finds out that all of Carax's books are being burned, and he wants, to, he wants to read more of his books, but they are all being sought out by this one very, like, shadow character, and I'm really enjoying it so far, and I'm excited to see how it ends. Then we have Those Who Save Us by Jenna Bloom. This is another wonderful World War II historical fiction novel. Then we have The Storied Life of A.J. Fickery, and this is by Gabrielle Zevin. Without spending so much time trying to explain what this book is about, I'm just going to read the back because it says it perfectly. So, A.J. Fickery's life is not at all what he expected it to be. He lives alone, his bookstore is experiencing the worst sales in its history, and now his prized possession, a rare collection of Poe poems, has been stolen. But when a mysterious package appears at the bookstore, its unexpected arrival gives Fickery the chance to make his life over and see everything anew. And this mysterious package is not what you would expect and it's life-changing, and I loved it so much. The next book I have is Hilary Mantel's Wolf Hall. This is about the Tudor period. I really want to start reading the Wolf Hall series, and I know that there's an amazing mini-series adaptation as well. I'm really interested in the Tudor period, and I thought this would be a perfect place to start, so very excited to read this one. Then we have another favorite, and that is Dutch Girl, Audrey Hepburn and World War II by Robert Matson. My favorite actress is Audrey Hepburn. I love her so much. Her life in this book is captured so beautifully, her experience in World War II and the amazing things that she did to help the people that she could. This is also about her interest in becoming a ballerina, which I am very passionate about the ballet, and I just loved learning about her life 
especially set during the backdrop of World War II. This is just an incredible book, an incredible biography, and I highly recommend reading it if you're interested in Audrey Hepburn's life or just in World War II. The next book I have is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Towles, and I haven't read this book yet. I have been recommended it a lot, and I do feel like I'm going to enjoy it, but I have heard mixed things, so I'm not too sure how I'm going to feel about it, but I don't want to know too much going in, so I, I don't know too much, so I can't really tell you too much about it. Then the next book I have on my shelves is actually an ARC, and this is The Fairy Tellers by Thomas Jubber. I think that's how you would say his name, Juber? Jubber? Um, it is A Journey into the Secret History of Fairy Tales, and I was actually sent this book, so this is an ARC copy, and it sounds so fascinating. I don't pursue a lot of ARCs because I'm much more of a classics reader than front list contemporary reader, but this book sounded fascinating. It's just all about the history of fairy tales, and it sounds wonderful. It says, Who Were the Fairy Tellers? In this far-ranging quest, award-winning author Nicholas Juber unearths the lives of the dreamers who made our most beloved fairy tales, inventors, thieves, rebels, and forgotten geniuses who gave us classic tales such as Cinderella, Hansel and Gretel, Beauty and the Beast, and Baba Yaga. And so that, I have a huge fascination and love for fairy tales. This just sounded wonderful, and I can't wait to read it. The next book I have is... The Girlhood of Queen Victoria, a selection from Her Majesty's Diaries between the years 1832 and 1840. The next book I have is The Painted Girls by Kathy Marie Buchanan. This is a book that my wonderful best friend Emma gave to me as well. This is inspired by Edgar Degas' um, paintings, and Edgar Degas is one of my favorite painters, so very excited to read this and to find out more about it. Again, art and books is just my favorite thing. The next two books are both by Khalid Husseini and they are The Kite Runner and A Thousand Splendid Sons. I have yet to read these two books, but I know everyone loves them and they're incredibly heartbreaking and that's just one of my favorite things is a heartbreaking book. If you recommend which one I should start with, then definitely let me know in a comment because I would love I would love your advice, but very excited to read these two. Then the last book on this part of my shelves is Nicholas Sparks' A Walk to Remember. This is the only Nicholas Sparks book that I have read um, because I love the movie A Walk to Remember and I really wanted to read the original story, so I watched the movie first. I, I grew up loving it and then I read this book, I think in 2018. I don't read a lot of Nicholas Sparks or a lot of like purely romance books, but this one was such a joy to read, especially because I love the movie so much. Those are all of the books on this shelf. Now we will move over second to last shelf we will get to now. Okay, now we are on to my little shelf. So starting from left to right, I have Schindler's List by Thomas Keenely. This was actually given to me in my P.O. box from a subscriber, and her name is Cindy. So Cindy, thank you so much. Like I said a million times, I really love historical fiction, and I love the movie Schindler's List, but I've never read the novel, so I'm really, really excited to read this. So thank you so much, Cindy. The next book I also got in my P.O. box from a friend, and that is The 100-Year-Old Man Who Climbed Out of the Window and Disappeared by Jonas Jonasson. And this is another Swedish book. I've heard a lot of people compare this book to A Man Called Uwe, so I'm very excited to read it. Also, the back sounds hilarious. Sitting quietly in his room in an old people's home, Alan Carlson is waiting for a party he doesn't want to begin, his 100th birthday party to be precise. The mayor will be there, the press will be there, but as it turns out, Alan will not. And I think that sounds amazing. It's supposed to be very funny, I think. I'm not too sure, though. I assume so. The next book I have is Susanna Clarke's Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. The next book I have is Trinity by Leon Uris. Now, this is an Irish book that I was recommended by one of my friends who I used to work at Barnes & Noble with. She is Irish, and she loves this book, highly recommends it. The way that she was describing it, it's it feels like an epic. So it says, told through the 
the lives of its people, this is an epic, yeah, epic history of Ireland from the famine of the 1840s to 1916 Easter Rising. Trinity chronicles the terrible and beautiful drama of more than half a century. And that just sounds amazing. Um, she said that it was, it's her favorite book and it makes her sob and that's just, that just sounds perfect to me. The next book I have is Geraldine Brooks's March. It's supposed to be about Mr. March who is the father of the girls of Little Women. Like I said, love historical fiction, especially if it is surrounding classics that I love, which I do adore Little Women. Then we have Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried. I read this in school, but I really, really want to reread it. The Things They Carried is a classic work of American literature that has not stopped changing minds and lives since it burst onto the literary scene. It is a groundbreaking meditation on war, memory, imagination, and the redemptive power of storytelling. And I remember loving it in school, but I don't remember too much about it, so I'm excited to reread it. Then I have If We Were Villains by Emma Rio. I read this for the Dark Academics Book Club, and this is one of the books that I really, really enjoyed. A lot of the Dark Academic books that we've read I haven't loved, but this one I did really enjoy. It's a lot about um, how Shakespeare influences this academic setting, these students that are going to this prestigious school and they're very passionate about Shakespeare and it's how Shakespeare and the plays really um, manipulate their lives in really interesting ways and there's um, a murder mystery. It's, it's very intriguing and I really enjoyed it. Then we have another classic Dark Academia book and that is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I read this so long ago, so I don't know if my opinion would change about it, but when I read it, I really enjoyed it, though there are a lot of problematic elements that do get under my skin a bit, but I mean, I enjoyed it, so I would have to reread it to, to see how I feel about it now. Then I have Ocean Vuong's On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. I haven't read this yet. I know it's supposed to be beautifully lyrical. Everyone that reads it loves it, so I'm so excited. Then I have Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This is another dark academics read. This was, I think, our first book that we read for the book club, and I adored it. It's, it's less about the girls of the Trojan War and a bit more about the men, which is kind of contradicting the title, but it is about the women as well. I just wanted the women to have more of a prominent part of the story, which you would expect from the title. So that was my only complaint, but other than that, I adored it. I gave it five stars. It's an incredible book, wonderful introduction to um, Greek mythology and uh, Greek retellings. The next book I have is a favorite, and that is The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows. This is such a wonderful, charming, sweet book. This is a historical fiction book. It's an epistolary novel, and it's about this group of people on the island of Guernsey, and in times of war, it, unintentionally, they create a literary group. This literary group in correspondence with a writer in London, and it's just a fantastic story about how books bring people together, and it's absolutely beautiful. I love it. And the movie is fantastic as well. The last book I have is The Book Thief by Marcus Su. Zach. This is a beautiful special edition that I got from Barnes and Noble and I have read half of this book years ago and I never finished it because it was just so emotional and at the time I was just, I just needed to take a break from it because it was affecting me so much but in a good way. So I do want to pick it back up from the beginning and reread it very soon. This is set in Germany during the Nazi occupation and it's an incredible story. I've watched the movie so I know at least if they change, I don't know if they change too much from the book to the movie, but I know how the story goes. I think that's why I was so, like, nervous to finish it, because I just didn't want the ending that I knew was going to happen to happen, if that makes any sense. So, I love the book, Thief, the, the part that I've read. I just have to push my way through, even though I always say, like, I love crying at books and I love emotional books, but for something about the book thief, I just, I have to finish it though. <laughs> and that is it on this shelf. I have one more section to show you and then we'll be done. On the shelf, I just have these little knickknacks. So I have a little watering can, which I use to water my plants. And then these are all of my nature books. So I like keeping a little pine cone up here, but it does uh, leave some, some little pieces of pine cone, but I have to clean that off. And then I have my on-the-page author portrait. 
This is of Boris Pasternak, which I haven't shown you guys yet, but he will be in my next restock, which will be happening very, very soon. He's on the page of the first page of Dr. Zhivago, and then this side is some poems from Yuri Zhivago at the end of Dr. Zhivago. There is a poetry collection from the main character, so love how he turned out. Really excited. Hope you guys like him as well. So now I will move from this way to this way. So over here I have Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Foer. I love this book. Um, I also love the movie. I think it's fantastic. And it's about this father and son relationship set in New York during the time of 9-11 and how this son, after his father passes away, he kind of leaves him this scavenger hunt and his quest is to find out he thinks that his father left him a secret message before his death and it's an incredibly heartfelt story and it also does have images in it which I think is so exciting and really adds a lot to the reading experience because I know so many books and you know how passionate I am about illustration but I think photographs in books is so has has a different quality but is so beautiful. The next book I have is The Reader by Bernard Schlink and this is another one that again historical fiction. This is a movie that I love but I have never read the book and I'm really excited to. Hailed for its coiled eroticism and the moral claims it makes upon the reader, this mesmerizing novel is a story of love and secrets, horror and compassion unfolding against the haunted landscape of post-war Germany. Which again you guys know how much I love historical fictions set around the world wars. So that is going to be a great read. And then I have two Kazuo Ushiguro books. First I have Never Let Me Go and then The Remains of the Day. I really want to get into Kazuo Ishiguro this year and I think I'm going to start with Never Let Me Go because I have been wanting to read this book for so long. I don't know much about it but I know that it's good to go in blind and then The Remains of the Day I think is the relationship that a butler has with the family that he works for, I'm pretty sure. Again, don't really want to know too much going in, um, but th that's my guess. <laughs> so very excited for these. I know that Never Let Me Go is probably going to make me cry, which I just can't wait for. Not too sure if The Remains of the Day is emotional, but if it is, that is a win from me. <laughs> then the next book I have is Mitch Albom's The Next Person You Meet in Heaven. So this is the sequel or companion novel to The Five People You Meet in Heaven. Again, that's one of my favorite books. I haven't read this one yet because I want to reread The Five People You Meet in Heaven and then reread this one. Um, they're not together because these are supposed to be like white books in the rainbow, um, so that might bother some people, but I like going um, color coordinated in somewhat of a rainbow. It just suits my eye a bit better. Anyway, don't want to know too much about this one because it is a sequel. So really excited to read it though because The Five People You Meet in Heaven is one of my favorite books. The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is a very, very popular book for good reason. It is fantastic. It is a gorgeous retelling of the story of Achilles and Patroclus and set during the Trojan War. I think everyone should read it. It looks like everyone is reading it recently, so that is fantastic, and I absolutely love it. This is the Bloomsbury Modern Classics Edition, and I love that cover. Then we have my stack of nature-related books. The first one I have is My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Durrell. I bought this book because I went through a phase of watching and adoring The Durrells in Corfu, which is a fantastic TV show and I really wanted to read. Um, it's based off of a real family and this is the youngest of the siblings and he's a lover of nature. These books are what the show was somewhat based off of, so really excited to read that. The next book I have is one of my favorite non-fictions and that is Landmarks by Robert McFarlane. He is one of my favorite nature writers. You'll see I have a few of his other books as well. This is um, a beautiful nonfiction about different landmarks that he has walked through and experienced. Robert McFarlane weaves words together in a way that I've never experienced before, especially for nonfiction. It just, it doesn't feel like nonfiction at all. The next book I have is The Peregrine from J.A. Baker. This is introduced by Robert McFarlane. It's just supposed to be one of those like classic nature books that 
anyone who's interested in nature and bird watching should read, which I am, so can't wait to keep reading that one. The next book I have is Beatrix Potter, A Life in Nature by Linda Lear. This was gifted to me from my friend Kira, so Kira, thank you so much if you're watching this. This is a beautiful book about Beatrix Potter's life in nature and her relationship with the natural world. I adore Beatrix Potter. She is incredible. Love her so much, and I can't wait to read this very chunky um, <laughs> book and biography about her and her life in nature. Ghost Ways, Two Journeys in Unquiet Places. This is by Robert McFarlane, Stanley Donwood, and Dan Richards. And this is also beautifully illustrated as well. And I don't want to know too much about this book either. Um, it's supposed to be a hauntingly beautiful diptych of works inspired by Robert McFarlane's travels with celebrated collaborators to two eerie corners of England. That's all I really want to know. I kind of want to go in not knowing too much because I feel like it's one of those books that it's good to be pleasantly surprised along the way. But I love literally everything Robert McFarlane does, so I am excited. Then we have another Robert McFarlane, and this is Underlands, A Deep Time Journey. This is a fantastic book about the underlands of the world, and it is just gorgeous. I really don't even know how to explain it because it's such an interesting story, but it's basically Robert McFarlane's experiences going underground, and it is a deep time journey. He talks a lot about the history of the planet and the history of our land and the earth and it's a gorgeously written book and I just highly recommend literally everything he writes. The next book is actually fiction but it's all about nature so I put it with my nature books and that is The Overstory by Richard Powers. I've been recommended this book a lot. It is the winner of the Pulitzer Prize, and when I bought it in the bookstore, I read the first few pages, and it sounded amazing. It sounded a lot like a fairy tale, um, just the way that it read, and again, don't want to know too much going in, but also this cover is one of my favorite covers absolutely ever. I think it is so beautiful. The next book I have is Vesper Flights by Helen MacDonald. I also have read H's for Hawk, but I don't own a copy. I found these signed, signed editions. This is a first edition, and it was signed by the author, so I think that is so cool. I love Helen MacDonald's writing. She is a nonfiction writer about... This is really just about her life and her, her relationship with nature, like a lot of nature books. I just really resonate with a lot of what she says, especially also in H's for Hawk. Just a fantastic writer and a fantastic book. Um, this book is getting hidden, so I will show it to you next. This is The Joy of Walking, Selected Writings Edited by Susie Cripps. And this is a combination of classic writings that have something to do with walking, as well as just walking as, um, as a meditative act. I'm a very passionate walker. I love going on walks. I feel like that sounds really silly, but it's true. Um, I will read the back as well. So it says, The joy of walking brings together essays, fiction, and poetry which celebrate the simple acts of putting one foot in front of the other. Walking has long been a source of inspiration and creativity to writers, many such as William Wordsworth and Walt Whitman. You know, Walt Whitman is like a highlight word for me. If I see Walt Whitman in the synopsis, I am picking it up. <laughs> and... Um, extols the virtue of walking in the countryside, either alone or in the company of friends, whilst others, such as Charles Dickens and E.M. Forster, another two highlight authors for me, explore the thrill and dangers of moving about the city. For women writers, such as Emily Bronte and Elizabeth Gaskell, again, highlight authors, they show walking to be a route to freedom and privacy, and many describe how walking can be healing, surely a valuable lesson in today's frantic world. This is just, like, me in a book. It's just <laughs> classics and walking and nature and all those writers I love. I can't wait to read this book. The next book I have is from my beautiful cousin, Megan. So, Megan, I don't know if you're watching this, but thank you so much. This is John Green's new book, The Anthropocene Reviewed, and this is Essays on Human-Centered Planet. My cousin said that this really made her happy to be alive and it made her emotional and overjoyed that we have this existence that we are gifted and just really makes you appreciate the life that you're given and the planet that we live on and I don't really want to know too much else. I kind of want to be 
pleasantly surprised and emotionally affected just how Megan explained. Um, so yes, very excited to read that one. Waterlog, A Swimmer's Journey Through Britain by Roger Deakin. And again, um, Robert McFarlane recommended this book on his Instagram, and I am a very passionate swimmer, and this is about um, Roger Deakin's experience swimming through different waters in Britain, and that just sounds absolutely perfect for me. I want to read it in the summer when I am going to be swimming a lot. Um, oh, I like that, like swimming through Alice's Wonderland. That's so beautiful. Um, so yes, I bought this last summer. Didn't end up reading it, unfortunately. Oh, it has an afterword by Robert McFarlane, of course. Just as a passionate swimmer, and as a passionate walker, and as a passionate lover of nature, all of these books I'm just so excited to read. A lot of them I haven't read, a lot of them, uh, some of them I have, so this is one that I haven't, but very excited too. So this is my mass market paperbacks stack, so they are a, just a bunch of different random novels that are just small, so I put them together. The first one is A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. This is a beautiful novel. This is Picador's modern classic. A man who loses his partner and him coping with with the loss of his partner and he is a professor um, in California but he is from England and in the movie adaptation um, it's beautiful it's it's directed by Tom Ford and it has Colin Firth and Matthew Good in it playing the two main characters it's just a stunningly simple but poetic book and and film really really loved it the next book I have is a room with a view by E.M. Forrester this is the movie tie-in edition I just I love the movie so much I love the book so much I normally don't like the movie covers on books but I have um, another edition of this book and I really just wanted to have the movie cover which is rare for me but I love it and I think it's just adorable um, I love the movie so much, I love the book so much, so to have them together makes my heart happy. <laughs> then we have Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. This is my favorite Dickens that I've read so far, besides A Christmas Carol, but they're so different that I feel like it's hard to compare. One of my favorite books ever, just, uh, I don't even know how to explain what it's about. It's about an orphan, it's about... It's about so much, I don't even know how to explain it. Just read it. It is an incredible book. You will not be disappointed. It's Dickens at his finest from what I have read of him so far. This is also the edition that I first read the book from, so it has all of my tabs and annotations in it, and it just makes me really happy. I also cracked the heck out of the spine, which just, again, makes me really happy. Um, because it's a mass market, I don't mind like scuffing it up and, and ruining it. If it's more of like a prettier edition, of course I'll take better care of it, but I love when mass market paperbacks look a bit worn and torn. The next book I have is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. This is from the Penguin Great Loves collection. Another gorgeous edition, love the cover, and the book is even more beautiful. Because I read Swimming in the Dark by Tomas Jodorowsky, the two characters in that book read Giovanni's Room and it has a great effect on their relationship. So I wanted to read Giovanni's Room on its own after reading that to kind of understand the significance. Giovanni's Room as a room, you can you can feel it. You can you feel like you're there with with the characters and it's this beautifully emotional story about this this relationship between these two young men and um, their time in in Paris and it's just a stunning, stunning novel, my first James Baldwin, and I can't wait to read much more from him. The next book I have is Marcel Proust's Days of Reading, and this is from the Penguin Great Ideas collection. This is one of my favorite covers and such a beautiful edition. It's actually embossed. You can see right there. So beautiful. This is about Marcel Proust's life, not only as a writer, but as a reader when he was younger, and the books that he loved. Love this book so much. And then I have two editions of the same book, and that is a separate piece by John Knowles. I first got this edition, and then I found this one at my independent bookshop, and I loved this one as well. This is one of my favorite books. It is slightly dark academia. Um, it's about this main character and his relationship with his best friend, and the relationship is, is very interesting. Um, I feel like it, it's up to the reader to decide how you feel about it, but it's how this one act between the friends 
kind of influences their relationship with one another. It also has a backdrop of the war and the obligation to go to war as young men and the emotion that is captured in it is just, I think, my favorite part about it. And then soon after reading a separate piece, I was at my independent bookshop and I found this book and this is Phineas by John Knowles, the brilliant new work by the author of a separate piece. And this is supposed to be kind of a companion novel and I haven't read it yet but I'm so excited to. I finished a separate piece and I was just heartbroken that it was over so the fact that there is more I'm so excited to read this but I do want to reread a separate piece and then read Phineas right after. He is the best friend of the narrator. Our narrator is Jean. Jean idolizes Phineas quite a lot and their relationship's really really interesting to follow so I'm excited to see what goes on in, the, in this book so very excited for that one. The next book I have is Franny and Zoe by J.D. Salinger. I read The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger in school, and it's one of my least favorite books ever, um, so I don't know how I'm going to feel about Franny and Zoe, but I bought this book not only because I want to read it and I want to try something else by J.D. Salinger, and I really want to enjoy his writing, I just, I can't stand Holden Caulfield. I just... I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> um, but I hope that I will get on better with Franny and Zoe. This is also a Rory Gilmore reading list book. Excited about that one as well. Hoping, don't know how I'll feel about it, but hoping I'll enjoy it. Then I have Anne Frank's The Diary of a Young Girl. I read this first in school and I haven't reread it since, but I remember just being so affected by it. It was the first time that we really saw the brutality of history. This was the first time that we were really just shown the brutal truth and I think that I was so appreciative of that because as kids you don't want to be sheltered, you want to understand and it's just such a beautiful way to understand what so many people were going, uh, were going through during this time in history. So an incredible book. I mean, it's it's Anne Frank. The next book I have is To Kill a Mockingbird, one of my favorite books ever by Harper Lee. This, I mean, oh, I read this book in school, I adored it, and then I reread it and adored it even more. Atticus Finch is one of my number one fictional crushes. I love him so much, and I love this book so much. And if you haven't read it, please, 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 please read it. It is incredible. Just absolutely incredible. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Then the next book is an old favorite, and that is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. I adore the movie adaptation, which is the cover. <laughs> the cover is so funny. Um, it's so corny, but I love it. And this is The Princess Bride. It is S. Morgenstern's classic tale of true love and high adventure. So we have Wesley and Buttercup and their incredible adventures that they go on. Um, Again, I mean, I love the characters in this book. Anigo Montoya, oh, love him. My name is Anigo Montoya, you killed my father, prepare to die. That's like one of the best, <laughs> it's one of the best scenes. Um, and inconceivable. This is just a book that is so sentimental for me. I love the story, I love the movie. I had a huge crush on Wesley when I was growing up. I think he was one of my first celebrity crushes. I love The Princess Bride. It is amazing. And the last book I will be talking to you today is Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead. Why do I have this book? Because it is referenced in Gilmore Girls. It is a scene between Rory and Jess, and Rory tries to convince Jess to read The Fountainhead, and Jess tries to convince Rory to read Ernest Hemingway, which if you don't know, Ernest Hemingway is one of my favorite writers. I don't know how I'm going to feel about it, but I am excited to see my reaction. So yes, that is that. Blame Gilmore Girls. <laughs> so those are all of the books that I have. Um, some of these are classics, some of them are not classics, but because they are mass market paperbacks, I just keep them together. Alright, and there we have it. Those are all of the adult literary fiction and contemporary books I have on my shelves. We do have sneak peeks of some classics in here. Okay, and there we have it. Part 1, 
is already done. Part two is now finished as well, and I hope you have enjoyed seeing all the books in my literary fiction sections. This has been such a joy to really go through my shelves and look back on some of my old favorites and also look at my TBR and see which books I haven't read and which ones I'm really excited to read. I would love to know which ones you think I should prioritize. That is like number one um, of the ones that I haven't read yet, but anyway, Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you have enjoyed and I will see you soon in episode four, which is going to be my children's classics section, which is, it's getting into classics. I'm going to be in my glory. I'm so excited. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day or night wherever you are and that you're reading some amazing books and that you are just having a wonderful, wonderful day. I am sending you my very best wishes and I... We'll see you soon in another video and also in episode four, which will be my children's classics section. So I will see you very soon and happy reading.